Hello and welcome to episode 131 of Vokta Gaming. I am your host, the vocal terrorist, Jesse Rain, and we are here with game three in a best of five series between these two players. First up is our Red Terran, winner of the GSL Super Tournament. <clears throat> he is from South Korea. His name is T.S.L. Polt. And opposing him, currently two games down. He needs to win three games in a row now to take this match. He's on Team Millennium. His name is Stefano. So, we saw Polt play an absolutely devastating game yesterday. Completely smashing Polt with the Marine King bio-heavy, aggression-heavy style. It's something I really love to see Terran players doing. Now, today we're on Shakura's Plateau and this is quite different. This is... Really, I wouldn't say favoured in either direction. There's, there's benefits to both races from being on this map. Of course, if you're Terran, you have this small central choke here. Uh, because of uh, the rocks here at the back direct mansion, generally, armies like to move in this central location. So you can set up really nice siege tank lines here. However, being a Zerg player, it's very easy to take quite a lot of bases to really, really split the map almost in half and get those bases up nice and early. So it will be interesting to see who this favours. My money, of course, as always, is on TSL Pulp because, damn, he is playing so well lately. That is a huge blow to Prime that they lost him, especially to a team like TSL who was struggling to hold on to their better players uh, earlier this year and uh, late last year, in fact. So we see the first Marine coming out in this drone will have to leave, of course. Stefano, early hatch again, because that's what you do as Zerg. That is just what you do. You need to. And if you're a player not doing this at the top level of the game, then generally uh, there is something wrong with you. You really do need to be, in most cases, mimicking the Korean style of early hatch. It's just so, so strong. Pult, meanwhile, is getting up his early second command zone, so going one racks expand. That is perfectly fine. That is the correct response, by the way, to seeing an early hatch. Interestingly, he hasn't uh, two racks this time, however. Two racks bunker pushing in both previous games, and really quite effectively. But this time, it's only a one racks. But what I like about this is, you get the same effect. He's just played two games against Stefano, where he two racks bunker pushed. And now... When he one racks bunker pushes, Stefano treats it like a two racks bunker push because that's what he's expecting. And he still loses mining time and it still gives Pulp time to get his command center up, to get his economy going. And of course, Stefano has floated the Overlord over. Ooh, has seen this command center. So he knows exactly what's going down. And oh, factory going down. Will we see a reactor now on the barracks? That is the question. Will we be seeing reactor hellions? Yes. Reactor Hellions are on their way for Pult. Okay, so he's going to use map control very heavily in the early game. He wants to potentially stop the Zerg spreading creep, possibly even stopping a third expansion from going up here. The Zerg player should basically feel like he isn't safe outside of his own base. That is how uh, Reactor Hellions work in the early game. The Orbital Command finishes. Will he float it to the, the outside or just use it for mules and SCVs? He is going to float it straight to the outside, so he feels very safe at this point. And, oh, Polt, you sneaky snake. Polt going for an early third command center. Now, this is something you can do with Reactor Hellions. Because the Reactor Hellions, once they're out on the map... Oh, ho, ho, ho! brilliant move there from Stefano, delaying those Hellions. Fantastic. I really like that. So because the reactor Hellions give you map control, you can stick a third base down and quite often the Zerg player will not be able to scout it because he will not be able to move around on the map with Lings. Now the question for me is, did he see that? No, he did not. So there we go, he is not aware that that is going down. We have Stim on the way for Marines rather than Combat Shield first. 
That generally means you're going to be more aggressive, but of course he doesn't have the Marines to do that. So I think it's generally just choosing to get that before combat shield. We have a spine crawler going down now. That's a reaction to the reactor hellions. Uh, it stops them from poking in and just trying to bait the queens and zerglings. And the spine crawler, in fact, moving forwards to the bottom of the ramp to uh, make run buys just a little bit harder. But let's see, we have four Hellions now out on the map. They are doing some sick scouting. So we see checks for a possible third. We'll go right up into this the base here. Ready. Sees there is no third. So he knows right now he is going to have the advantage. They're even on bases. They are currently pretty even economically. There are 50 drones to 33 SCVs, but mules definitely help with that. And of course, with this third orbital command now, he's going to get way, way in front. Hellions here, just stopping the creep from spreading any further. Any more tumors come down, they will be able to take care of. Meanwhile, in the base, we have a bailing nest, we have an evolution chamber. And we have the lair finished. That's really, really nice. And there we go, see, forcing councils on creep tumors, always, always good. We switch back to the base, we see now siege tank production fully underway. Plus one weapons, plus one armor, also on the way for Pult, along with Siege Tech. Meanwhile, we have a Spire going down. Along with a Macro Hatch. There is the Hidden Spire. Oh, nice, they're using the Overlord to drop Creep for it. That is very nice, by the way, from Stefano. Again, Pult looking to see if he can find up third base Stefano. But Stefano just does not have one up. He's having to go for the Macro Hatch first. And the spine crawler moves forward. Oh, but that means the Hellions could theoretically do a run by. What that's doing is protecting the creep tumors. And now there's Bailings as well. Bailing speed is about halfway finished. Bailings, of course, super effective against Hellions when they can land hits. They absolutely melt Hellions. This is nice from Stefano. He is managing to spread that creep further using the spine crawler to push with it. It's very, very nice indeed. We see the two extra gas going down for Pult. It's going to allow him to really hit up that production. Also getting an armory. Mm. Two more barracks as well on the way. So it'll be interesting to see where Paul goes for this. Will he go into Thor production? Oh man, those Hellions are being chased down. There's nowhere for them to go. They're trying to raise Hellions, but oh, they get caught by the Bailing. And they all die. Nice moves from Stefano. Those are the only Hellions that Paul had. And that was exactly what Stefano needed to do. Okay, now he needs to get this expansion up. I like this, by the way. Just using this orbital command for SV using mules. Now he's going to float it down to the third base. Now that he's hit saturation on both of his bases. Because before that, there really is no advantage to having it down there. Uh, because you will not experience any economy boost uh, that you wouldn't get from having it on safer ground. Until you are fully saturated. So we have a few meter list in production. We have the third base now going down for Stefano. But with siege tanks, a bunker even going down, a ton of marines, this is going to be quite nicely defensible for Polt. Now the question is, what can these mutants pick off? There are no missile turrets. He's not ready for this timing attack whatsoever. So we should get quite a few kills. Mutalist racking up the worker kills now. Oh, even stopping supply depots from being built. That's always nice to do. Uh, unfortunately, Polt is not supply blocked. Missile turrets trying to go up, and the mutas just pick up and leave. But now we have a huge force of speedlings here. Perhaps going to go in and try and crush the third of Stefano. The Marines still away. Oh, we're going to kill some workers. We're going to lose a lot of Zerglings. 12 workers killed. That's not the greatest at this stage in the game. It's better than nothing. He hasn't lost many mutas, if any at all right now. He's only losing Zerglings. That's right. He forces the lift. Oh, can he actually kill the command center? That, that would be huge. It's going to burn down. No, he does have SCVs repairing it. This is a huge attack for Stefano. How many SCVs did he get in the end? Okay, only two extra, so only 14. Not the greatest, but what that attack has done has meant that his third base will get up and his fourth base without any reprisal from Polt because Polt right now is spending all his energy and money defending this base. Only one missile turret up in the line. He hasn't finished that supply depot yet, interestingly enough. Uh, I don't know if he's realised about that yet. We do still have the mutas here ready to harass and cause some trouble. They try and get in without taking a shot, but they do. There is no way for them to attack those workers without getting attacked in return. Okay, so his fourth base is now finished as well. 
forces are cancel on the refinery nicely done. Stefano, these meters are really, really working in his favor. The problem for him now is that plus two weapons and plus two armor is about to be down to pole, along with vehicle weapons. Vehicle weapons, of course, not going to affect the muters. He does now have a reacted starport, or he will have a reacted starport when this barracks finishes making that marine. Which means that he will get double medevacs out. That's the only way I can see this going. I can't see him getting uh, Vikings in response to muters. But we shall see. Yep, double medevac production. Okay, Terra vehicle weapons level 2 on the way. So Pult is hitting these upgrades hard and fast, which is something I like to see him doing. <clears throat> we have just plus 1 attack for the muters right now. Not bothering with the plus 1 defense. They are going to melt if they hit any bio right now because they have the plus 2 attack compared to plus 0 armor. On his ground units, we have 1-1. One, one. That is all. So Polt racing ahead in the outrage. We finally have plus two flyer attacks and plus two ground melee attacks. But of course, infantry weapons level three now on the way for Polt. Adding another factory as well. Now the meter's getting some nice SCV kills here. But again, the bio comes to chase them out. And there is a missile turret there. Now they can technically go in and kill that missile turret. But with too much bio there, it's not going to matter. He does get a reactor there, but that's not going to bother Polt. Because he has tons of reactor barracks right now. Losing that one is not going to matter. And even getting a center tower, that's really, really nice from Paul. I think that's a really good use of it. Uh, he'll be able to see any uh, burrowed infestors or the like coming towards this base. And burrowed infestors is really the thing that scares you as an entrenched terror player. Now these meters taking more shots and not really doing anything in return. All they're doing is keeping this tiny bio force moving around, which is not going to bother Paul at this stage of the game. He has tons of forces out. At the 60 minute mark. Okay, we have an infestation pit on the way and a second Evo chamber. So he wants to start hitting those upgrades even harder to catch up with Polt. Polt is going to have 3-3 three, three done though, very shortly. Loses the supply he does get supply block. So again, these meters still harassing, but he is starting to lose them to the missile turret now. And that is bad. And a bio force don't manage to take any more down. Only a few uh, slightly injured, so... Not doing too bad from Stefano. Now what Polt is doing is moving forward and going to take down this creep spread. Stop it from getting any further. And this is where I feel Polt has the advantage. With this center, look at the way it forces you to engage. Oh, but he catches a siege tank unguarded, forces a stim, and does not lose a single muter doing it. Very nice from Stefano. This harass has been working well for him, but Polt, I'm afraid, is just getting so far ahead. Oh, Stefano is swarming in. He's going to catch that bio force, but taking so many siege tank shots. He needs to escape. He's going to try and take down this forward siege tank. Does get it. There are too many muters there for just a small bio force to kill before they can pick off a tank or two. But this is nice taking down the creep from Holt. Now it looks to me like Stefano is going to try, not a run past, but try engaging from a different angle. Oh, and it's a huge engagement. Stefano just rushing in with everything. Taking down sea tanks and bio, but more and more streaming in for Pulp. Stefano has the supply advantage. He's killing a lot of units here. And he will pick off these siege tanks as well if he's careful. Excellent work, and now this command center needs to be cancelled before it dies. Will Pulp do that? No, he doesn't. Allow Stefano to kill it. Oh, man. Pulp in trouble. Pulp desperately trying to hang on here. He has one Thor out, but one Thor isn't enough. The Muters regroup with the army, and now Speedlings and Bailings coming in yet again. The Muters magic box that Thor, and it dies quickest I've ever seen a Thor die. More Marines going down, tons of damage being done here by Stefano. Stefano with an absolutely wonderfully timed attack here. Playing like a Zerg should, massing units and crushing everything in his path. Now he needs to be careful though, he needs to not do futile attacks. He needs to be careful, look at that, up to 34 workers killed. We see it's 71 drones to 50 SCVs now. So Stefano is about the drone count he needs, he can focus on making units, he's getting the hive up. Uh, I would imagine for Broodlords, and that's what I would take at this point over Ultralists. I'm still not a fan of how Ultralists work. That medevac is a goner. So right now it's 4 base versus 2 base. We do have another orbital command uh, floating now from the main to the expansion where it will be more used. But again, Stefano coming in. 
absolutely devastating Colt's army, but it's not enough. And now he's going to lose all his mutants. Okay, that was a really poor attack there. Losing a far too many mutants, in fact. Two of those Thors. There were too many Thors. Oh, he nearly took that one down. But the second one was still going to be a problem. With plus two attack, it is huge, huge, huge damage from those Thors, of course. That is big splash on those mutants. He's building a second Spire. Why is he building? Okay, he must be going double upgrades from now on. Trying to keep up with the level of the Thor upgrades themselves. Or even get ahead. We have Vehicle Weapons level 3 about to finish. And when that is done, those Thors will destroy mutants. You need to be really careful. They don't take any flash. But ho ho ho! Borrowed Bailings in the trees! I did not even notice them so much. And Polt's army just died. Oh, I cannot believe that. Stefano getting another race on. Oh, that just delays that push so much. That was so good from Stefano. Oh, I am excited by that. I I love Borrowed Bailings. I nearly swore. I apologise for the image of swearing that was in your mind there. I nearly swore. That was so awesome. Polt's trying to take down this fifth base, but that is not happening yet. He needs to push in slower than that. We have Infestors out now, so they can and will fungle the bio. But the Mutable now coming in to kill even more workers at the back of Polt's third base. Tons of Mutas dying, and uh, tons of SCVs dying, rather. And there is nothing to defend at home. Holt now is slowly pushing forward, but also retreating units in, eh, bringing medevacs with him as well to elevate her up into the main. He's going to take down a tech lab. Stefano really in control of this game, so long as he can stall and hold off this push until he can get a better unit composition out for dealing with it, until he can get perhaps Broodlords out. Here comes a great Aspire. So if he can get those Broodlords out, Corruptors already being made, he can just hold off this push. Get that out. He will be fine. He will be in a great position. The only thing that's holding him back are his upgrades. They are slow. They are far behind Pulse. And Pulse is just slowly leapfrogging these tanks forward. He has Thors with them. There is not much bio here yet. The bio is streaming in now. I feel like Stefano's ability to attack is about to just disappear. Once the bio reaches, he now has, Pulse has a huge force here. And it's going to be a while before he gets enough food lords to fight them. Of course, we do have plus three flyer attacks. Uh, plus two ground carapace just finishing and plus three melee attacks. So those speedings will finally catch up to the marines. I remember words. We have Stefano trying to get a fifth base up here now. But he's lost his third. He's about to lose his fourth as well. He's going to lose a corruptor as well. So food lords are definitely on the way. Holt is very much aware of that. Borrowing the drones. He's not even going to scan to kill them yet. Just going to take down the hatchery and now push him with his force. Stefano did so well in that mid game, but this late game push by Polt is so, so strong. Fungal's going down on the Marines. The Broodlords are there, but they're dying so quickly to the Thor splash. Bailing's now, though, doing a ton of damage to the Marines. The Thors are being killed, but more and more bio coming to join them, and the siege tanks are still in place. Now the Broodlords have to push these siege tanks back. Stefano needs to be slow and careful about this. He cannot rush in on mass. He needs to be very, very careful about his choice of engagement. The problem is he doesn't have very many bases up. He's lost two of his bases. He finally has this one up, but obviously it's not mining yet. So Colt doing a ton of damage here. Bailing hits going down those Marines though really nicely. But it doesn't look like it's quite enough. And every time he loses a Broodlord, that's so much money in production time to get them back that we will not see them in the game again. And in fact, everything from Stefano dying. Congrats, Constant Stefano. GG from Polt. And Polt takes a best of five. Three nil on Shakura's Plateau. Oh, that was probably the best I've seen from Stefano in this series. But even then, it still wasn't enough to beat TSL Polt. Absolutely fantastic way to round out the week. Honestly, this three-game series has been one of my favourite series I have seen in StarCraft 2 history. This has got me perfectly excited and ready for IPL4. That starts tonight. And of course, I'll be at the Kyoto Lounge Barcraft in Manchester this Sunday. It's opposite Manchester Metropolitan University. And you are free to join me there from 12 o'clock onwards. We'll run to about 1 to 3 in the morning whenever IPL finishes. Six big screens to watch the games on. Eight PCs to play StarCraft 2 on. 
normally some Masters players, some Diamond players, you know, top level players about who are more than willing to give you advice on the game as well. So not only do you get to watch IPO, you get to become a better player at the same time. Who could ask for more than that? As well, do not forget you can join me on www.scforum.eu and by joining the forum that means you can get your very own replays casted right here on Vokta Gaming. Also, one final message, please, please, please uh, go check out www.youtube.com forward slash Temple Hub. That is the conglomerate gaming YouTube channel that I'm now a part of. My videos will be going up there very, very shortly. Of course, they will always be available right here on Vokta Gaming first. But in conjunction with that, uh, they have another hub called Temple RPG. And I will be doing a Let's Play for that starting in a week or so's time. Now the question to you is, what RPG would you like to see most? Leave a comment, talk to me on SC Forum, hit me up on the Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash Voxagaming, or of course send me an email at voxagaming at gmail.com. Let me know what RPG you would like me to do a Let's Play of for Temple RPG. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this week. It's been an incredible set of games. I've had so much fun doing it. And I hope to see you guys again next week. We'll be back on Tuesday with yet another SC Forum replay. Thank you very much and I will see you.